Dominic Kerwin celebrates his 50th birthday tomorrow with a very special show at the Waterfront Hall here in Belfast. I caught up with Dominic to talk about the show and talk about his years in show business. So Dominic, you've got a big night coming up in the Waterfront, a big celebration concert, I believe. I have indeed, yeah. It's coming up very shortly. On, on the night of my actual birthday, it's uh, my 50th birthday, yeah. Yeah. F the 5th of June. All right, OK. Tell us who all's in the lineup. It's a kind of big 60s show, really. It's very it? much a 60s show, yeah. And I've been managed by uh, Robert Pratt of Chimes International in Glasgow now for the last couple of years. And he's obviously very much involved in a lot of shows and putting on different types of shows. I've met a few acts along the way, and uh, these are a few people who have uh, thankfully agreed to come across and work. And I'm talking about Jerry Marsden of the Pacemakers, um, Les McKeown of the Bay City Rollers, PJ Proby, the Merseys. And then on the show as well, obviously, I'll have my sons, Colm and Barry, do a spot with me. And we have a young girl from Donegal who's been touring with me throughout the UK called uh, Alien Boyne as well. So right. it's a big show overall. So because you're doing all these 60s acts on the bill, is this going to be a new way of direction for you? Are you going to go down the, the 60s route or the more kind of poppy stuff from way back? Well, I, I've, I mean, my recording, Robin, over the years has never been, I mean, I, although I'm seen to be in the, the country music yeah. market, I mean, my, my recordings have been very, very diverse. I mean, my last album prior to what I have out at the moment, was an album of all 1970s covers. Yeah. It was a, an album called A Little Bit More. Um, so I've never really sat on any one particular thing. So I wouldn't say I'm going to go down the route of the 60s, but that's not to say that we can't pick up on a track or two and maybe use in a show. All right, so going back to, to, to the start, was it the 60s music that influenced you or was it country right from the beginning? No, it was very much music in general. I suppose my background, you know, I, I was born and brought up in the town of Oma and, and the earlier part of my career, I was very much involved in, in Irish dancing and that type of thing. So traditional music would have been very much yeah. there. But I, I mean, I was asked recently about what, what, what album do I remember uh, buying at a younger age. And one that stands out in my mind was uh, an album called from Planksty. Actually, it was uh, Cold Blow on a Rainy Night, you know. Yeah. So th that was a sort of the background. But, you know, like any teenager, whenever I was involved in music, it was about getting out. It was very much a social way of yeah. uh, getting involved in life. So uh, musically, we, we covered a lot of aspects. Um, so whatever was happening in the, in the 70s and the 80s, that's what the band was doing. We were also obviously covering country and Irish as well. Yeah. So. And you mentioned the Irish dancing there. You were very good, I believe. Well, I danced and, uh, and I was successful. So yeah. if you put that down as being very good, then, <laughs> it, then I was. Can you still do it? I could do a little bits of it, you know, but I don't, I don't really do that much of it no more, no. All right. Uh, you mentioned the other birthday, the big 5-0. Are you slowing down now, the touring, or do you still love it as much as you did years I, ago? I wouldn't know what, what it was to slow down, really, yeah. Robin. I, touring is a big part of my life, always has been. Uh, you know, we've been, I suppose for the last 20 years in particular, I've, I'd probably be doing somewhere anywhere, anywhere in the region of 150 to 200 shows a year. I've cut back on that, yeah. admittedly. I haven't done as, you know, we might have pulled that back to maybe about 140 shows a year as such, you know, so that's a little bit more time. Um, I, you know, if, I'm, if, if the work's right and, and the tour's right, yeah. I'll be there to do it, you know, and I, I don't see it any other way. Is there some kind of fitness regime you have to put yourself through to keep going? No, just keep going. Yeah. That's it, that's your fitness. <laughs> you, know? and you mentioned the sons there, it's a real family affair, the band. Is it, is it good to work with members of your family? Well, it has only been a family affair to the extent over the last couple of years. I mean, there are, there are plans and, and changes coming there very shortly. Uh, my son, Colm, who he went to London a few years ago, got himself a, a degree in musical theatre, performing arts, toured with Jesus Christ Superstar, but he's always, always had that inkling to, 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 to songwrite. Yeah. And uh, last year he went to, he headed off to Nashville and he uh, spent seven months out there where he's been doing a lot of songwriting. He's come back and he's working a little bit with me at the moment, but now he's now presently uh, l looking for his long-term vi visa. Right. Because he wants to go back and live in America and he wants to work in America and he wants to do a lot more songwriting. So yeah. that's number one. Number two, my, my second son, he headed off to college to drum, drum tech in London and uh, came out of there and he then joined me for a couple of years. But again, he's heading off to Nashville with Colin at the beginning just to look around him, see what's going on. You know, but it, you know, they're, they're talented and that's what they want to do and they, that was an opportunity for me to give them a chance to get on, the, to thread the boards and to get out there into the world of music. But it's not really about me, it's about what they want to do and, and, and I'm happy enough to let them go and do that. Did you always push them to get out there? Never. No? It was never a push at home, never a push at home. Music was always there, it was always in and around them. You know, they've, they've, all, they've both done their, their, their GCSEs and their A-levels, they've got their music you know, behind them. So, and that's what they want to do musically, you know, so uh, 
as I said, an, it, it was an opportunity for me to bring them on the road and give them the experience of working on stage, working with audiences, working with other people as well as in performing in bands as well. So um, if, if that's what I've done for them, then I'm happy enough to have done so. Did you ever get the urge to relocate to America and maybe move to Nashville? Or? No. No? No. I, I, I would probably, I suppose when I look back at my career, probably might have been be based b better out of the UK rather than actually out of, uh, out of Ireland as such, you know, but not America, no. I've been to America a couple of times. I've recorded three, three albums in Nashville. A um, lot of friends there, met a lot of people, you know, but no, never had an inkling to, to live there. In the chance to tour with some pretty big names as well, the likes of Charlie Pride and uh, Tammy Wynette and Kenny Rogers. That. What were those guys like to work well, with? Well, the early, earlier part of my career, when I first joined up with Ritz Records, as they were there back in 1989, I, I, um, I got the chances to tour with these people. Charlie Pride was an absolute gem. He was one of the first that I suppose uh, I was introduced to, I was brought along to meet. And uh, he wanted to know everything about the band, me, my background. And within a couple of nights, he knew everybody by their first name. So he probably taught me a lesson that no matter where you go or who you're with or what stage you are in your show, that you know, give time to other artists as well. Um, Tammy Wynette, well, she was a lovely lady to meet, but sadly, very much cloaked by the entourage that she yeah. had. But the lady that we met was lovely. Kenny Rogers, well, you know, I think everybody knows about Kenny Rogers. He's, a, he's an absolute gentleman to meet, but he's such a busy man and he's, he's a... He's prob he was probably the, big, the largest of the artists that I, that I worked along with, so you just didn't get as close to him. But, you know, for the moments that we did meet him, an absolute gem. All right. Any ambitions you still haven't achieved? Probably to sit on your side and to do <laughs> television and to, and to present a little bit more. And I would love, to, I, I, think, I think that the, the scene of country music is, um, is old hat now at this stage. I think there's a lot more modern stuff going on. There's probably a lot of talent in, in and around our, in the north of Ireland that is not getting an opportunity to be heard. So I'm talking about songwriters and, yeah. and such. Because um, I think the scene has changed. If you're in America, I mean, without a doubt it has changed. Yeah. There's a lot more cutting edge to it now. And I would believe that Northern Ireland, and indeed Ireland in itself, would have a lot of that as well. So I think the, the, the image is wrong. And uh, if, the, if I could help that along and change that around, then I would like to be part of something like that. Are there any kind of young singers out there at the minute who you've looked at and thought, wow, these guys are really good, but they need somebody to come along, take them under their wing? I've heard a couple of songwriters, yeah. yeah. I've heard a couple of songwriters, yeah. But they need, they need that opportunity. They need that platform. That platform doesn't seem to be there, you know. Um, Maybe in around the cities there might be a little bit more, you know, but around the countryside it's slightly still a bit old hat, you know. Yeah. The attitude. All right. What are the plans for the rest of the year now? What's, what's in store? Just to keep working and enjoy it and take whatever breaks I can where, where I can, you know. So. Yeah. Any holidays planned for Sunday? I've nothing planned yet, no, no, but the holidays are, you know, you can look at a brochure and head off at any particular time. All right. Dominic, thank you and have a great night on the waterfront Robin. on the 5th of June. Thank you. Thank you very much. I d may I say just before we go that uh, the waterfront is not all about my birthday as such. It's based around three charities uh, that I'm working for uh, on behalf of and I'm talking about Macmillan uh, Cancer Care Support, Marie Care uh, Cancer Care and also uh, an organisation built uh, based in Mid-Ulster, brand new. Uh, called uh, Carrots Integrated Cancer Care as well. So that's what the show in, in Belfast is all about as well. Okay, great stuff, Dominic. Thank, thank you, Robin. Thank you. So happy birthday, Dominic. And if you are going along to the waterfront tomorrow night, have yourselves a great night.